Our journey begins 65 million years ago, when amazing creatures took their first steps. These aren't dinosaurs! Dinosaurs sing! Ugh! I want to go back in Mommy! Till a massive asteroid collided with the Earth, bringing their reign to an end. Or we could suffer the same fate as the dinosaurs. No matter what we do, an asteroid's gonna wipe us out. So we should party hard and wreck the place! <laughs> what? They've got a point. All right, you can each have one toy. Lisa's a big toy. No fair. That means I get two small toys. All right, that's it. Forget it. No toys for anyone. Hey, I know you. <gasps> wait, wait, come back. Dad, follow that dinosaur. <sighs> so tired. Go on without me. Ugh. Hmm. You're T.R. Francis. You wrote the Angelica Button books. They're my favorite fantasy novels. Um, yes, it's me. But why are you working at a dinosaur show? And why did you run away from me? And how did Angelica get a new wand after Baron Morteth burned the Wandwood Forest? And look, oh, I hate to break it to you, but all the books you kids love are conceived in executive boardrooms. The plots are based on market research. <gasps> Everything I believed about young adult literature is a lie. <laughs> it's not against the law to sleep in a Tyrannosaurus head. Can I have my allowance early? I need to buy some carbon offset credits so I can burn all my Angelica button books. Oh, honey, I'm sorry your book lady turned out to be a dinosaur. Do you believe publishers would lie to their readers just to make an easy million bucks? A million bucks? It's the perfect crime. As long as you don't mind betraying the trust of vulnerable young minds. The perfect crime, eh? Whatever the job is, I'm not interested. A million bucks has changed stupider minds than yours. I like the beat. Play me the tune. <laughs> Oh, no thanks, gentlemen. I've got a nice, quiet life here, and I mean to keep it that way. Your friends are looking at my bloomers. Wash them again. Mm, I'm in. <clears throat> it's true. I'm fluent in every imaginary language, from Dothraki to parcel tongue. Very sad. Paper is writing a kid's fantasy novel. Well, I, I don't like to brag about it, but uh, I did publish five modestly successful children's books. Hmm? Relax. With a team, we put together our book will fly off the shelves. And we'll be sipping my ties on a beach in Shelbyville. Your group writing a book? I'll show you. I'll write a book myself. A personal story my readers will connect with. Chapter 1. Wait, I can't start without music to inspire me. Why is Bach next to Muddy Waters? That's my problem. I gotta get these CDs organized. Okay, we've cased a lot of tween books. What's their M.O.? The heroes are all orphans. And they're set in a place kids relate to. Say, a school. Vampires? Like these? Huh? Or those? Huh? Or these guys? Huh? Oh. So many vampires. Okay, the vampire genre is sucked out. All we gotta do is find a new monster to be our hero. Troll! That's it. Our book could be about an orphan troll. Trolls live under bridges. The school should be under a bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. But are you scheming to co-author a successful series of children's fantasy novels? Okay, Stonehenge, let's see how good you are at eavesdropping without a trout. Uh, don't kill him. That's Neil Gaiman. The king of fantasy books on our fantasy book writing team? Okay, Gaiman, you're in. Your job is to get lunch and lose the British accent. Cheeseburgers, french fries, I'm all over that, pal. But if I'm gonna use their free internet, I really should buy something. God, I love being a writer. The End <laughs> It's good. Weekly Reader Star Selection Good. The Troll Twins of Underbridge Academy. I'm so proud of us. Oh, you didn't write any of it. That tuna didn't sell it itself. Writing is the hardest thing ever! Huh? Hope you don't mind us printing our book in your room, Lise. This is a really good book. We know. 
We wrote it. If you don't have a made-up author with an inspirational tale, you don't have a book. Where's your Franklin W. Dixon? Where is your T.R. Francis? Where is your Stephen King? What we need to do is find some sap to pretend to be the writer of our book. So hit the floor and find some pathetic wannabe author. Oh, who am I kidding? There will never be a book with my name on it. Or your name could be on a book in ten minutes. Do I have to do any writing? No. Amen. I was raised in a traveling circus. My mother was a lady ringmaster and my father was a lion barber. I wrote my first story with clown lipstick on a flattened popcorn box. It was featured in the New Yorker's Best 40 Under 4 issue. Gentlemen, to the troll twins of Underbridge Academy. What happened to me? In one vulnerable moment, I became the thing I hated most. A literary fraud. Here it is. An advanced copy. The Vampire Twins of Transylvania Prep? Where's the trolls? Look, we market tested the book, and it really got dinged on the whole trolls thing. I mean, dinged. So we made some changes. The trolls were the best part! Do the characters still say trolly instead of cool? No. Oh, that is so untrolly! How could they do this to our book? It was the singular vision of seven people. No way! What you're feeling is called pride of authorship. Our story is actually more important than money. I was going to buy the apartment next door. Queer the deal, we lose the money. Bart, remember the Thousand Year War between the trolls and the ogres? Yeah? Now it's a dance contest at the vampire prom. Steal back our book. Somewhere in that building is a computer with their sucky version of our masterpiece. The book prints at midnight. So if we swap in the original version, they'll print the wrong book. Oh, I'm the pizza delivery man? We didn't order a pizza. No, of course you didn't. The establishment I work for delivers pizzas to everyone and then gives the customer the option of accepting or refusing delivery. The central computer's through here. All we have to do is upload our file and... Good evening, gentlemen. One in your gang tipped me off to your little caper. A traitor? It was me. <gasps> <gasps> My name is finally on a book! And they're letting me write the sequel. Lisa, would you care to do the honors? I'm sorry. Yes! So I pretended to betray you. Then after he typed the password, I secretly switched the flash drives. You switched the drives? And the best part is, my face is still on the back flap. <gasps> Gaiman! And the most brilliant part is, I don't even know how to read. Come on, sir. You'll be late for your appointment. Hush! No one must know I'm not in perfect mental health. The Kaiser would be furious. Hip joints! Who wants a hip joint? Eyeballs! Can't see without your eyeballs! Euthanasia! Sweet, sweet euthanasia! Ooh, can I buy it as a gift? No! Come on in, Monty. I believe last week we were discussing your anger issues. Anger issues. Anger issues. <sighs> Monty, I, I give up. You, you will never have this. A cheap piece of plastic with photos of ugly people? That is my family. <laughs> eh. What? <clears throat> hmm. No pulse. Mom, I can't believe Dr. Nussbaum's dead. Uh, we met a lot of therapists. Which one was he again? He was the one who helped us communicate. I'm gonna wet the bed to get their attention. You're the one sleeping in it. I didn't say I'd wet my bed. Maggie, don't! You need to hear our stuff. No one listen? Maggie, never talk again. Oh, this man meant a great deal to me, and helping out with the cost of this service was the least I could do. Oh, Smithers? Shame! Just get me home quickly. And this year's Nobel Prize for Physics goes to Professor John Fring. Well, how could a man in his right mind miss a car heading right towards him? I 
think it's this headpiece he's wearing, sir. Boy, guy, the, the Oculus Frank or Froculus provides you with a complete virtual reality experience, uh, letting you live in a world of your dreams. Guy. Now for the after party. <laughs> I must have it. Hmm, not bad. Next. Dragon porn. <laughs> uh, sir, if I might suggest, uh, the last thing your therapist said was, you need a family. We could program a virtual family for you, sir. A virtual family, yes. Uh, we only need three children, thanks. Oh, what kind of coal mine you running? You, wife, look at me lovingly, as if I'm your husband. Uh, this thing says all families in the plant are required to try out. So far, so good. Two and a half children, wife with current hairstyle, you're all hired. Okay, family scene, and action. What's the matter, Homer? Last night, Marge and the kids didn't get home till 11 at night. When I came back from Moe's at 11.05, they were still taking off their coats. Happy birthday, dear Bernie. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh, Smithers, could you remove the ankle bar? More, more, more. Oh. <laughs> We're not coming home, homie. What? Well, what do I do without you here? You can do what you did with me there. Go to Moe's. Yeah, take it from me. That's rough. Yeah. Heading back to an empty house. No one there to tell you what to do. No kids fighting all the time. Wait a minute. I can eat dinner in any room of the house. Bum, 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 bum. You, you're all I want to know. I feel free. Snoopy knew what he was doing, all right. How you doing? Ah! Don't worry, I've seen you naked plenty of times. I live in the house behind yours. Homer, it looks like you're out of beer, pal. <clears throat> wow, can a man just be friends with a woman? Here's some pretzels. Yes, he can. Hmm, does that turn you on? Oh, yes, that's hot. <laughs> the perfect temperature. Oh, don't worry, I'll fix that. Have one. I'm celebrating. My boyfriend proposed. Where's your wife? Uh, she's staying at this billionaire's house working as a virtual reality actress. You know, the usual. Oh, Homer? Something's going on with Homer. My spousal sense is tingling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Looks like the old makeout king's got a new queen, huh? Guys, we're just friends. It's purely catatonic. Platonic. When did salad get so awful? Kale ruined everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like a guy. There is a one test for a romance that never fails. Enjoy it. That is not a love. Our daughter, the president, is delivering her speech. Excuse me, do I ever get a joke? Keep rolling. Mr. Vice President, Madam Speaker. Sir, I know you're getting frustrated, uh, so we recorded some future scenarios. Yes, let's see what life will be like when I'm old. How did this happen? Don't you take that time with me. A Harvard man. I was warned there'd be nausea. I don't need them. My life is perfect. Everyone out. You're all fired. 
Having a family is the most meaningless experience I could imagine. Try acting. Mm. Come on, kids. I'm taking my bathrobe. Did you see the guitar lesson sign on the telephone pole? I took a tap. No, I'm not going to take the lessons. I just needed to blow my nose. Ooh, my family's here. Gotta go. <laughs> now, Marge, it's cool. All we do is share our deepest thoughts and feelings. Marge, it's nothing. She's just my new best friend. <laughs> After all I put up with for all these years, if I'm not your best friend, then what is this marriage about? I should just drink it off at Moe's. <laughs> You'll never hear the name Julia again. Hi, I'm Julia. <laughs> I just wanted to introduce myself and tell you, you've got a great husband. I've got a nice bicycle, too, but I keep a lock on it. I have no interest in riding your bike, but I want you to know that your bike loves you as truly as a bike can. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Apparently, you didn't do anything wrong, but I'm not wrong for getting mad at you either. Marge, Julia taught me lots of stuff that could help us. <laughs> <laughs> I have to confess, I did see him naked on the roof. I did too, and I was at 10,000 feet. Now for the final fantasy. I love you and how. <laughs> You're too good for heaven, man. <laughs> Excellent. Hmm, that's not plugged in. <laughs>